O God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us, with thy servant Queen Elizabeth and all the faithful departed, the sure benefits of thy son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when all things are gathered up in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of thy promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. O oh, merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, in whom whosoever believeth shall live, though he die, and whoever, whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally, who also hath taught us by his holy apostle St. Paul not to be sorry as men without hope for them that sleep in him, we meekly beseech thee, O Father, to raise us from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we may rest in him, as our hope is that our sister doth, and that at the general resurrection in the last day, we may be found acceptable in thy sight and receive that blessing which thy well-beloved Son shall then pronounce to all who love and fear thee, saying, Come, ye blessed children of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Amen. The choir will sing the motet. Jeez you the very thought of thee.
O God, the protector of all who trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And to God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The great brass cross of Westminster will be placed at the head of the coffin. Passing the king and the queen consort, the queen's children, grandchildren, and off to the left in the corner, the wider royal family, relations of Her Majesty, descendants of King George V. In the faith of Jesus Christ, the Queen ruled as sovereign from the moment she took over from her late father, and particularly when she was consecrated to the role at her coronation in 1953. The vigils will now begin that will continue until the Queen is taken from here to her state funeral on Monday. The state colour of the Queen's company, 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards will be laid at Her Majesty's feet. She became company commander on the 6th of February 1952. Her cipher of E-R-R-E intertwined. The loyalty of the Queen's company who brought her here today carried her on their shoulders. The captain, who although he commands them in battle, gives way to the sovereign as the company commander. The first watch to be mounted by members of the Honourable Corps of Gentlemen at Arms. by the Household Cavalry. 
And at 20 minute intervals throughout the period, the Queen is lying in state. A changing of the watch will take place for 24 hours of each of the days. The Honourable Corps of Gentlemen at Arms were founded by King Henry VIII. and form the closest bodyguard to the sovereign in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And on the outer line, the well-known site of the Yeoman of the Guard with their halberds inverted, the points aiming at the ground. The Yeoman of the Guard was founded in 1485 by King Henry VII. And these officers will turn their swords and rest upon them. and by their heads. Black Rod leads the Speaker of the House of Lords, Lord Speaker, with Garter King of Arms, and the Speaker of the House of Commons. Either side of the choir on the steps were representatives and members of the House of Lords and House of Commons. As the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk, moves forward to the King. The Duke of Norfolk, responsible for all elements of state ceremonial, will organise the state funeral for the Queen in due course. And also the Lord Great Chamberlain on the left there who's just started in this reign. He is Lord Carrington. His father was a cabinet minister under Margaret Thatcher. Elizabeth II is lying in state as the king and queen consort take leave of this great Westminster hall built in 1097 by King William II, William the Rufus. Great hammer beam roof was put in by King Richard II. The King's sons and their wives, Peter Phillips and the Earl of Snowdon. The Duke of Gloucester, the Duke of Kent, and Prince Michael of Kent follow. A deeply moving moment for all members of the royal family, thanking the Archbishop of Canterbury, who read prayers and led the worship. His chaplain to the right, holding the Patriarchal Cross of Canterbury. As he thanks the Dean of Westminster also.
The Princess Royal, who escorted her mother all the way from Balmoral Castle through the Highlands down to Edinburgh, and then in the aircraft that took off from Edinburgh Airport yesterday evening.